wet here. I think it is. Anyway, so the test was actually a lot lighter than I expected. It's, it's all of like three or four exercises. The first thing you do is the box. You do your figure eight. Uh, you're, if you put your foot down, you don't fail automatically. You put your foot down, they just take off like five points. It's very lenient here in California, at least. And then you do, as you come out of the figure eight, you have to do a, a swerve as you come out of it. So you come out, you go straight for a little bit, and then you swerve around some cones. I think they just tell you to swerve around it to the right. But it'll depend on the course. Um, after that, you rally up, you line up again for the next set. And th before each little thing you do, the instructor will walk you through it. He'll show you exactly what you have to do so you don't forget. And once you've done that, you do the emergency stop. So you have to get your bike up to about 18 miles an hour, according to, the, according to what they say. And then e-brake within, like e-brake before you hit this cone, and then you have to stop between these two cones that are side by side. You have to make sure your bike comes to a stop completely inside that space. And they're watching to see if you, you know, you pull the clutch and you downshift and you end up in first gear with the clutch pulled in and you're one foot down, right foot on the rear brake. And of course they're also watching to make sure that you use both brakes, front and rear, when you're doing your when you're stopping and at any time. They'll take points off if you're not using both brakes. Anyway, the, so the emergency stop was the one that was really easy for me. And the box was not easy. I put my foot down in the box. Um, finally, they make you do a 90 degree turn, followed by a slightly broader turn they want you to take at around, I guess, 18 to 22 miles an hour or something like that, a little bit faster than what you're used to. And one of my friends who was taking the course with me, he scraped his foot pegs doing that final faster speed turn. And anyway, so he's a bit of a natural at the whole motorcycling thing and he aced the whole thing, no problem. Easily the best rider in the class. Uh, see, my other buddy, the guy who rides a 650R, he got like five demerits on the emergency stop, and I got eight demerits because I put my foot down in the box. After you do that, and luckily in our class, uh, Nobody dropped their bike and nobody failed, so it was all good. It was a great class. And at the end, they handed out these envelopes, and we had to write our home address on it, our mailing address. And basically, they said they'd mail us our official uh, course completion authorization, I guess, certification. That way, we could take that to the DMV here, and you don't have to take the writing test. And from what I've heard, the writing test here is a little draconian. They will fail you for the slightest infraction. If you put your foot down on the uh, DMV's test, you automatically fail. If you go outside, you have to keep your bike riding within these two white lines that are about a foot apart. And you have to do this fairly uh, large, or fairly tricky sort of U-turn while keeping your front tire aligned within the two painted white lines. And if you're trying to do this on like a sport bike, it can be pretty tough. And of course, if you're a new rider, all of this stuff is going to be hard and you're likely to fail the DMV's test, and a lot of people report that experience of going there. And the person who's testing you at the DMV usually is not a motorcyclist, it's just some random public servant who's just following whatever directions are in the official rules handbook that they use. And so the minute you do anything wrong, they, might, they probably won't cut you any slack. Uh, so the MSF is really good, in general, for just learning the real basics of street riding. It's not nearly enough, I think, to qualify you to ride on the street. And in fact, in some courses, the instructors will tell you, hey man, you've passed this course, but you're not really qualified to ride on the street. What this is, is a certification that allows you to take your motorcycle to the local parking lot and practice. And some uh, instructors will actually say that. You just, you just don't have enough experience coming off of uh, like eight hours of 
construction. So yeah, so the, the you, can, you can take your chances with the DMV test if you're confident enough, or you can in effect, and some people call it buying your license. But you also do get a bit of an education out of it, <clears throat> so it's not totally buying your license. But in a sense, since it's so difficult to fail the MSF's writer course. difficult to uh, fail that, but you do have to pay $235 to take it. Whereas in like some states, I think Pennsylvania is one of them, the MSF course is free, which is pretty amazing. Here they uh, make all kinds of money off of it. pretty much it. So after that I got my certification about a week later and I went to the DMV and I did their written test. I got one question wrong. Whoops. It had something to do with, uh, they show you a picture of a three lane road approaching an intersection and there's like a car in the middle lane and they say, or in the left lane, and they say which lane is the best lane to be in? Is it the middle lane or the left or the rightmost lane? I believe the correct answer was the rightmost lane. But I said the middle lane for some reason. I kind of tricked myself, I guess. I guess if there were a car coming in from the right of that intersection in the diagram, maybe the middle lane would have been better. In the picture, there is no car coming in from the right side of the intersection, so I guess the right lane is better because it spaces you farther from the car that's about to turn left in the diagram. So after that, all I had to do is, uh, I think oh, they took my picture again, and now I got a, I got an M on my driver's license, which is, uh, or an M1, motorcycle certification, on the California driver's license. And that's the story of how I got my uh, motorcycle license. Most motorcyclists will tell you to take the MSF course, and uh, <clears throat> I support that. Another thing you can also do before you take your uh, MSF course, if you're really excited about motorcycling, and I'm sure you are, you can go off and pick up a copy of uh, Proficient Motorcycling by David Huff, H-O-U-G-H. That's a book that everyone who rides on the street should probably read. And that's a good thing to read before you go to your your MSF class. It's also a good idea to check out that DVD I was talking about, Ride Like a Pro. That actually will be more useful to you for the MSF because it's all slow speed maneuvering. And you'll learn some real good fundamentals. The most important of which for me was, like I said, dragging the rear brake. That's pretty much that. I'm going to shut the camera off now. Thanks for watching.